Food has labels where you can read about the ingredients. Same goes for the beverages, some of them or most of them. But what about air? Do we actually know what we are breathing? Today we'll be looking at the Air Gradient 1 DIY kit for the indoor air quality monitoring, but also Air Gradient Open Air, which is the outdoor version, so you can track the air quality not just inside your apartment, but also outside, because we do need air. We'll start in a couple of seconds. For starters, I must thank Air Gradient for sending me both of these devices, Air Gradient 1 and also Air Gradient Open Air. And it was such an awesome coincidence. At the same time Air Gradient contacted me to do test and review of these devices, is the time when beta release of Home Assistant 2024.6 was also released. And why is it coincidence and why is it important? Because with the 2024.6 or June release of Home Assistant, we now have official internal integration for Air Gradient devices. So the June brought us the internal local integration with Home Assistant. But actually, even before that, there were two ESP Home integrations, components or firmers or whatever you want to call them that allowed you to do the same thing. And if you're interested, you can check them in the links down in the video description. This one is the first one, but we also have this one, the second version. Both of those devices have the same internal components or almost the same internal components. There are some differences. Both of them, for example, have PM1, PM2.5, PM10, CO2, VOC or volatile organic compound and NOx sensor inside. The difference is that the Air Gradient 1 or the indoor version of the sensor also has two additional components. First one is the LEDs. At first they don't seem that much, but I really do love them and I think this is one of the best ways of how to integrate LEDs inside the DIY or not DIY project. They will at a glance show you what is the quality of the air inside. By the count of the LEDs that are lit and also the color of LEDs, you know that it is green, orange or red. And yes, I've experienced all of them inside my apartment while testing. Plus, additional thing that one has and the outdoor one doesn't have and doesn't actually need is small display where you can read the values, receive the stats or information from the device, etc, etc. Even if you are not considering to add those devices to, for example, Home Assistant, I do believe that both of those devices are really great purchase if you want to monitor the air quality. I'm actually talking about the ability of those devices to send data to cloud and then share the information about the air quality with your local community, be it your city, county, region, whatever. I know that some of you are concerned about the privacy here. And from what I've seen during my testing, none of the sensitive information is really shared with other users. So, for example, you can just select that this device is located in a city this and that, or in country this and that. Sure, the more in-depth location information you give about the device, the better for other users in that area. But it's all up to you. You can share the data, but actually you don't need it, especially if you're using Home Assistant. But enough about that, the topic of this video is the devices themselves, the quality, functionality and also integration with Home Assistant. Let's start with the quality of build. These are really impressive devices. They feature impressive injection molded cases with open air or outdoor one feeling a bit more rugged. And it should be also UV resistant and to some degree rain resistant, but of course you cannot submerge it. Size of both devices is not small, but that's a plus in this case, and especially in the case of Air Gradient 1 device, where each sensor is located in its own corner, and by that the devices or sensors do not impact the temperature sensor or temperature and humidity sensors that are inside the case. And during my testing I've noticed that both readings from outdoor or indoor are very similar or very close to the readings of other sensors I have very close by. In terms of functionality, we already mentioned what values you get from the device. These are the PM1, PM2.5, PM10, CO2 or carbon dioxide, TVOC or volatile organic compounds, NOx, plus temperature and humidity. And also the sensors inside device are not the cheap ones, they are really premium ones. Let's say it like this, if you want to build your own device, you can get it for much cheaper. 
but also less accurate and not calibrated sensors. No matter if you are using standalone system that is pushing the data to the air gradient map, or you will be using this combined with Home Assistant, the initial setup is the same. You will need to connect to access point of this device, and as soon as you provide power via the USB cable, the access point will be turned on. In the next step, you need to select the access point, type in the password, which is clean air, and after that you will present it with the screen, where you can either select from the list or type in the SSID of your home or office network and type in password for that same network. The device will automatically try to reconnect to your Wi-Fi network, since you want to hook it up to Home Assistant, and the version of the firmware I received it with was 3.0.9, I needed to update the firmware to the latest version. For that we will need to visit the web page where there is a web flasher, and the link to that web page will be also in the video description. And then, same way you would flash for example ESP home devices or Bluetooth proxies, click on flash now, select device from the list, connect, install the latest version of the firmware which is 3.1.4 at the time of the recording, click on it, and select if you want to erase the device or not. If you just want to flash the latest firmware, you do not need to erase device, you can leave it as is. If you do erase the device, all data will be lost, that means that you will have to reconnect it once again to your Wi-Fi. Click Next, Install, and this should be really quick process. It does say it will take up to 2 minutes, but in reality, it's much faster. This is real time. Next, and just to verify that everything is okay, you can press on logs and console, and of course you can also press reset device to see all the data, or you can just leave it here and see the data in real time being populated in the log file. Now that devices, in my case both devices, have been flashed with the latest firmware, it's time to add them to Home Assistant. Since I've already mentioned a couple of times, Home Assistant now has internal support, local support, for both of these devices, if everything went well, you should automatically see notification that the new device or new devices were discovered. Here I have two devices. This one is the outdoor one and this one is the indoor one, the DIY version of the device. Let's start with the outdoor one. Click on configure, submit, this one is outside, finish, and the device was set up. Let's now add the internal one, click on configure, submit, add it to the area, and click finish. First thing of course what I will do, I will rename them. This will be outdoor and this will be indoor. Let's first check the open air one or the one that is currently outside. This is device with 21 entities. From the sensors of course, this depends all on the sensors you have built in, extended, removed or whatever you did. We have information about carbon dioxide, humidity, NOx index, PM0.3, PM1, PM10 and PM2.5 plus the temperature and the VOC index, or volatile organic compound. We have also two hidden entities, raw NOx and raw VOC. As far as the configuration, we also have a couple of options. We can calibrate the CO2 sensor. Baseline is created on the past 1, 8, 30, 90, 100 or off. Configuration source is local or cloud, we are using local. NOx index learning offset is 12 hours but you can change it to 60 hours, 120, 360 and 720 hours. If you want to post data to Air Gradient, some of you may be concerned with privacy, they can turn it off, but I really do recommend that you send the data because this data can benefit others, especially if you're using outdoor sensor and also walk index learning offset. Then we have four hidden diagnostics, carbon dioxide, automatic baseline, NOx index learning offset, signal strength and the VOC index learning offset. If we check the internal one, we have very similar data, carbon dioxide, humidity, NOx index, PM0.3, PM1, PM2.5, PM10, temperature and VOX index, plus two hidden raw NOx and raw VOC. But in terms of configuration, we have a bit more information since the device itself also has a bit more functionality, for example, display and LED. We can once again calibrate the CO2 sensor, create automatic baseline, configuration is at local cloud, this is something new or different from the outdoor one, we can set the display brightness, we can lower it. Then we have information about the standards for the PM values, temperature can be presented in a Celsius or Fahrenheit, we can also change the LED brightness, 
you can customize the LED bar, it can be off, carbon dioxide or PM or particulate matter. I will leave it a carbon dioxide. Then we have once again a learning offset for NOx. If you want to post data to air gradient servers, you can test the LED bar. And we have once again VOC index learning offset. In diagnostic, we also have a couple additional sensors here that are hidden. And the new ones are display brightness, display temperature unit, LED brightness, LED bar, and I think that's more or less it. But when you add devices, you need to create a UI for them. And this is what I've created for those two devices. On the left side, we have Air Gradient 1, which is the indoor version of the sensor. And on the right side, we have Air Gradient Open Air, which is the outside or outdoor version of the sensor. For both devices, I'm using the same sensors. And the layout is also the same. But I'm using sections, and that means that no matter what device I access this UI from, it is the same to me, and the layout of the screen will not change. On the top, we have information about the carbon dioxide. And as you can see here, the air inside my apartment both now and yesterday was not that great. Actually, it was just a bit shy out of really dangerous. Yes, that's a problem of the summer in the city, where you cook, you live inside the apartment with the windows closed and AC running. As soon as the outside temperature dropped, we opened the window and we got the green values for the carbon dioxide. In terms of outdoor one, we see some peaks, but everything is always in the green. As for the PM values, from PM 0.3 up to PM 10, we do see patterns when one value increases, all the other value increases too, but the numbers are not the same. There were some changes in the US in regard to US air quality index, and that's why I still haven't adopted new values in the graph to represent them by the color. Then we have NOx values or NOx index, which is same both for indoors and outdoors, indoor temperature, indoor humidity, but also outside temperature and outside humidity. And the last one that you can see is air gradient VOC index for the indoor sensor and for the outdoor sensor. Since we now have all the values inside Home Assistant, it's all up to you to create notifications, alerts, to start vents, to stop heating, whatever you want to do based on those values. If you, for example, have ventilation in a room that is not always on, based on the PM values, but also carbon dioxide values, what you can do is trigger and start it, for example, when the values for the carbon dioxide are over 1,500 or even 1,000, and either pump in the fresh air or pull out the air that is filled with the carbon dioxide. In terms of PM values, on the other hand, you can, for example, start the air purifier, depending on the values you receive from the air gradient sensors. I mentioned temperature and humidity, and I did say that they are mostly accurate. I didn't see any big oscillation in terms of either being too high or too low compared to other sensors I have. Some of you will not be happy about them, but remember, each particle matter sensor that is counting the particles in the air also needs to have at least two additional values, that is temperature and humidity, because those two values, and especially humidity, is impacting the overall calculation of how everything is calculated. I really do recommend that you go and check out the air gradient website, because this information plus a ton of other information will be available there. And yes, if you are wondering about this UI, I will try to post the YAML code that is used for both of those sensors on my GitHub repository. If I manage to do that, the link to it will be down in the video description. And as always, it is free for everybody to take and tinker with. <laughs> Devices were great, they look great, they are really functional, and they are really awesome inside Home Assistant. But the elephant in the room is the question, is it worth buying it? And actually, what is the price? Each of those two devices you can buy in two forms. One is fully assembled and tested, and the other one is in the kit. If you want to save a couple of bucks, you definitely can go for a kit version. And no, it will not take you a science degree to assemble it. It's really, really easy and anybody can do it. Price of the outdoor unit tested and assembled is 190 US dollars. And price of the indoor version that, as I said, also has LEDs and small display is 195 US dollars. If you opt to go for the kits, where you need to assemble them, then the price is 125 US dollars for the outdoor one 
and $138 for the A gradient one or the indoor version. In terms of con about these devices, I don't know really what to say. Maybe the biggest one could be the price, but then again, it's not. The case is really well made. Documentation is really okay. The integration with Home Assistant is perfect. The devices work exactly as they are advertised. And I know that a lot of people, a lot of NGOs, organizations, schools, universities are using that and sharing the data with others around in their community. I'm really looking forward to see what will Air Gradient release next. I may know something, then again, I may not know something, but I do know that it will probably be once again a very good device. If you have any kind of a comment or a question about these devices or integration inside Home Assistant, as always, you can ask me down in a comment section below. And while you're already there, don't forget to subscribe if you still haven't subscribed and also hit the like button because that will tell YouTube that this is a good video and that more people should see it. And before I wrap up the video, as always, I want to say thanks to all those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. But let's not forget each and every one of you who has watched, shared, liked and commented on my videos. I really mean when I say thank you. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below and becoming a YouTube channel member for only 2 euros or 2 dollars per month. Or you can go to my merchandise store and get something there. But last and not least, you can always send me super thanks and I will be super thankful for that. I'll be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.